The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from the outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts and chastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. To the boys and girls that are here, we have Claire, Maya, Billy, and uh, my servers here, Matt, Maria, and Gabrielle. You know, we heard from the gospel that the Pharisees and some scribes from Jerusalem, they gather around Jesus, you know. We think that when they gather around Jesus, they follow Jesus. And observe that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, unwashed hands. But you see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they never wanted to follow Jesus, even though they seem like following Jesus, but they're not really following Jesus. They are there to criticize Jesus. Everything that Jesus said, they find faults. Huh? They might not understand, but they think that they know better than Jesus. That's why they question Jesus. You know, for us too, boys and girls, sometimes when God asks us to do something, for example, in the person of your mommy or your daddy or your grandma, your grandpa, ask, ask you to do something, let's say, clean your bed, tidy your bedroom, or pick up the trash there and here, we might not understand why they want us to do something. But we do it because we love Jesus. Later on in life, we will know. Don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees because they know so much, they question everything, they don't want to do it. So boys and girls, when your mom and your daddy ask you to do something, even though you don't like doing it, like, you know, stop playing your computer games, come and help me, you tell Jesus this, Jesus, I love you. I don't understand, but I'm doing it for you. And you tell your mom, yes, mom, I'm coming. Or yes, daddy, I'm coming. Uh, to the uh, not-so-young boys and girls here, young at heart, though, my brothers and sisters in Christ, some of you saw me, I, was, I wasn't crying, though. I was wiping my, my, my sweat off my face, so I wasn't crying. So. My brothers and sisters in Christ, at first sight, it seems that Jesus was downplaying the importance of the Jewish traditions. A closer look would indicate that this is not the case. Jesus himself was a Jew, and he grew up practicing these observances in the Jewish family, Jewish culture. So how could he downplay the importance of the observances of his own people? Jesus stresses the priority of our internal disposition in comparison to external. The scribes and the Pharisees know everything about the law and the practices to the letter. Like we heard from the first reading, Moses said, don't add anything, huh? But they add until 600 and something. They teach the Jewish people to observe the law and the teaching. This is a good thing. 
However, they don't really care about loving God with all their hearts, mind, soul, strength, and loving their neighbors as God loves, especially the poor, the widow, and the orphan. They look down on others. The poor, they don't care about the poor. They only care about the rich people who give them money. This is not a good thing, not good at all. In addition, they followed Jesus not because they were interested in becoming his disciples. Instead, they followed Jesus to find faults to criticize him. Jesus pointed to these scribes and Pharisees that everything they said or did, it was for their own praise. They like to be praised. They like the attention. In other words, their life was a life of giving lip service to God but not really having a conversion, not really doing what they preach. It is like me. For example, I receive Holy Communion on the tongue, trying to show all of you how holy I am, never thinking that the same tongue, however, is used by me to gossip, slander, making rash judgment. Have you thought of that? When I come to receive Holy Communion, whether it's on the hand or on the tongue. Not only I have communion with my, with my God, with my blessed Trinity, I also have communion with my brothers and sisters in Christ. So when the babies, the little children make sound, don't look at the parents, don't give them a stare, say, hey, there's a cry, cry area at the back there, go, go to the back there. That's what Jesus is trying to say That When you come to worship God, you have communion with the Trinity, and with your fellow brothers and sisters, whether they're big or they're little, mean they love them too. Examine our conscience can, daily can help us to a life of interior conversion. Examination of conscience isn't reserved for confession only. Every Mass you come, you know, it says, brothers and sisters, let's call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And the priest would pause. That is for you and I to examine our conscience before we come to receive Holy Communion, before we pray the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the religious community, we do that every day in the evening and night prayer. We pause to see how well we have done or how bad we have done. Where is God in, the, in our life? Where is God when we say yes to God? Where is God when we say no to God? We can use this tool daily to help us improve our relationship with the Lord and with one another. You can do that as bedtime examination of conscience. St. Ignatius of Loyola called it the examine. And you can also do it any time of the day. It doesn't have to be nighttime. It can be middle of the day or end of, uh, in, towards the afternoon and so on and so forth. No, we thank God when we cooperate with God, when we see God in the poor, in our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank God also when we fail because we are human, not an excuse, but we thank God that He, even though we fail to love Him, He is still there for you and for me, no matter what, that God doesn't abandon us. And we ask God for the grace to do better the next time, to be able to see Him, to love Him in the little things in life, in our brothers and sisters, especially the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, and the little ones. So as we continue with the celebration of this Holy Eucharist, let us ask our Lord when we receive Him truly to have a conversion of our interior life, so that our external and internal are in sync. Just like you sync your iPad, iPhone, they are in sync too. And today, my brothers and sisters, all of you are in luck. This is my shortest homily, less than, two, less than 10 minutes long. It's only two minutes because Father Michael told me to shut up, don't talk too much. But actually, no, we have Mr. Rick Jacomia who is going to share with us his experience of Christ the King Seminary. Mr. Jacobinia.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Rick Jakimiak, and I'm a parishioner of Immaculate Conception Church in East Aurora, which is not far from Christ the King Seminary. My pastor is Father Bob Wardensky, who I think many of you know from his years as pastor here, I think it was at St. Peter's in the 1990s. I told Father Bob I was coming here today and asked him if he had any words for you, and he immediately and sincerely said, tell them I love you. So Father Bob sends his love. But I've been asked to talk to you today about the seminary and its importance to our church and to our future priests. Now Christ the King Seminary traces its history back to before the Civil War as part of St. Bonaventure College, now St. Bonaventure University, and then later it moved to the 132-acre campus in East Aurora. There are 36 seminarians at Christ the King Seminary today. They live in dorms on campus. They attend classes with others in the state-of-the-art classroom facility. They do research in the seminary library, which I understand has one of the largest theological collections in the country, and they attend mass at the various chapels, including the gorgeous main chapel. It's a beautiful and peaceful place, and I invite you to visit Christ the King Seminary if you have that opportunity. It's about an hour's drive away. Spend the afternoon there walking the ground, seeing the walk around the lake and the beautiful uh, grounds. I think you'll enjoy it. It was the brainchild of Bishop Burke, who was the Bishop of Buffalo. Uh, but Bishop Burke never actually got to see the finished seminary. You see, he was called to Rome as part of the Second Vatican Council. And on October 16th, 1962, he died in Rome. Well, his grave is now right outside the chapel on the seminary grounds, so you'd be able to see him there. In addition to those 36 seminarians on campus, there's another six seminarians that are in what's called their pastoral year. And in your pastoral year, you leave the seminary, and then you go to an assigned parish, and you live and you work there. Now, the seminary does many other things besides priestly formation. It does deacon formation, for example. They have many retreats. Some of them for non-Catholics, by the way, but many Christian groups have retreats there. There's training for Eucharistic ministers and pastoral associates and pastoral administrators. These are the men and women that will be running many of our parishes in the future. Training for uh, directors of religious education, training for hospital chaplains and prison chaplains, and training for instructors of faith formation. But if you're not in one of those ministries, there's something for you also. There are many people that are enrolled in their certificate programs at this time. But you can just take individual courses for your own enrichment. There's courses on the Bible and church history and theology and other topics. And Christ the King Seminary, by the way, is a fully accredited graduate school. But most important is the role the seminary has and the opportunity it gives to our future priests. Men who want to be priests, these are the ones that will be saying our masses and hearing our confessions, witnessing marriages and baptizing our children and our grandchildren. They are earnest, inspired, well-grounded, and they deserve our support. So I'm asking for your support by your prayers, and by your donations. Next week, there's going to be a special collection and support of the seminary. Your donations next week, or online if you prefer, are very important to quality priestly formation in our church. Please be as generous as your circumstances may allow. And pray, pray for our seminarians that they will become excellent priests, as worthy as they can of being representatives of Jesus Christ here on earth. And while you're at it, pray for your parish priests. 
Many of us have been dismayed at the recent headlines with disturbing charges against some in our church. And your parish priests also must deal with the consequences of these allegations and revelations. I imagine it's quite difficult for a number of them. At my parish, we say a prayer for vocations at Mass every weekend. Please join me in that prayer. Dear Holy Spirit, please help those who hear your call only as a whisper that they may know that it is you calling them to service. May you fill those you call with the grace and courage to respond to your whisper. I will pray, encourage, and support those whom you have chosen for priestly and religious vocations. Amen. I want to thank Father Michael and Father James for allowing me to speak with you today. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for the kindnesses you've shown. And thank you for your support of Christ the King Seminary and our future priests.